Thomas Jane actually stabbed a guy in the chest, and Joe Pesci gave Macaulay Culkin a permanent scar with his teeth. Think acting is all fake? These actors have the hospital bills to prove it isn't. It's tough to be James Bond. Sure, you get the cool cars, the high-tech gadgets, and the slick tuxedos, but you also have to contend with any number of villainous henchmen, assassins, and thugs prepared to batter you senseless at every turn. Stunt work on Bond films has always been intense, but the franchise's fight scenes have grown particularly brutal in their execution during Daniel Craig's tenure, and he's got the wounds to prove it. During the filming of Spectre, Craig went toe-to-toe -to -toe with professional wrestler-turned-actor Dave Bautista during a fight scene that was supposed to take place on a moving train. At one point, Batista threw Craig across the train car, and while the move was planned, the way Craig landed was not. Craig tore a meniscus in his knee and had to take two weeks off from filming for arthroscopic surgery. He doesn't blame Batista, though, and in fact, he accidentally got his revenge by breaking Batista's nose when they later reshot the scene. I threw this punch, I hit him on the nose, and I heard this crack, and I went, oh god, no, and ran away. <laughs> Professional wrestling legend Jerry the King Lawler once famously feuded with the iconic and infamously confrontational comedian Andy Kaufman. Sixteen years after that, Lawler was called upon to recreate the feud by playing himself in the Kaufman biopic Man on the Moon. This time, Lawler would be acting opposite star Jim Carrey, who was only supposed to be pretending to be Kaufman. Carey took his role very seriously, though, and things got real for Lawler once again. Even more real than they had ever been with Kaufman. As covered in the documentary Jim and Andy The Great Beyond, Carey was relentlessly devoted to playing Kaufman, remaining in character during the entire production of Man on the Moon to the point that he puzzled and often frustrated his collaborators. Things sometimes got heated, and that included scenes with Lawler. At one point during the production, Carey, in character as Kaufman, spit at the wrestler, prompting Lawler to get physical. The exact nature of the injury isn't clear, but it was enough to briefly land Carey in a hospital. Even years later, Lawler was still expressing his unease at how far Carey took everything. Well, Jim Carey's an idiot. Though the Rocky films are often very melodramatic and bombastic in their portrayal of the title character's story, creator Sylvester Stallone still always wanted to aim for some level of realism during the making of the series. In Rocky IV, in which his character faces Russian boxer Ivan Drago on a quest to avenge the death of his friend Apollo Creed, Stallone drew inspiration from a real-life boxing match featuring two fighters who hated each other outside of the ring. Reasoning that Rocky and Drago would also hate each other, Stallone instructed actor Dolph Lundgren to actually hit him during the opening moments of their fight. I must break you. As requested, Lundgren came out swinging, and he hit Stallone so hard in the chest that he had to cut the scene short. Stallone knew the punches were serious, but he didn't know how serious, until later that night when his blood pressure shot up and he had to be flown from Canada back to the United States for emergency medical treatment. Stallone later explained, He hit my heart so hard that it banged against my ribs and started to swell, and that usually happens in car accidents. Actors understand that injuries can happen during intense sequences, particularly when the make-believe of a scene involves a physical struggle. Sometimes, though, the real drama of a moment lives on long after it's committed to film. This was the case with Gothica, the 2003 thriller that earned a lot of coverage in the entertainment press thanks to an onset injury. During a scene in which her character, Dr. Miranda Gray, is being interrogated, star Halle Berry was supposed to struggle against co-star Robert Downey Jr., who was supposed to attempt to restrain her. Berry approached the scene with such intensity that Downey accidentally broke a bone in her forearm while trying to hold her back. The injury made headlines, and Downey was frequently asked, to the point of frustration, to explain what happened while he tried to promote the film. In one of those interviews, he told IGN, I would say to her, Listen, you're a badass, but you weigh 102 pounds and your bones are as thin as, like, Crayolas. Then I turn out to be the a who's, like, trying to put her arm down with my hand open, and I feel her ulna snap. Channing Tatum received some of the best reviews of his career for director Bennett Miller's 2014 drama Foxcatcher, which was based on true events that happened at John DuPont's self-funded wrestling training facility in the 1990s. As Olympic wrestler Mark Schultz, Tatum worked hard to reach a certain level of realism and intensity in each scene, and it sometimes cost him. In one memorable moment, Tatum slammed his head so hard through a prop mirror that he hit the wall behind it, 
leaving him with a cut. In another, Tatum's demand for intensity led to yet another injury, this time at the hands of co-star Mark Ruffalo, who played Mark's brother and coach Dave Schultz. For a scene in which Dave slaps Mark upside the head, Tatum asked Ruffalo to hit him for real. Ruffalo did, but Tatum immediately regretted his request. Tatum told Variety, He pops my eardrum. All of a sudden, it's just making a screeching noise. I can't hear anything. Tatum's eardrum ultimately healed, but the look of pain on his face in the finished film after Ruffalo slapped him was definitely not acting. AMC's massive zombie hit, The Walking Dead, is an intense show full of shocking death scenes and undead battles. And, of course, brawls between its often at odds human characters. As the show's leading man, Andrew Lincoln was often at the forefront of these confrontations, and he took his job seriously. According to co star Norman Reedus, in an attempt to keep his energy high, Lincoln would often get very caffeinated before the show's most intense scenes. This, plus Lincoln's tendency toward clumsiness, would sometimes lead to his co stars unceremoniously getting punched in the face. Reedus described one such encounter on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. He's supposed to run and tackle me off camera, right? Just jump into an airbag. But he jumps and he punches me in the face with double fists. <laughs> and that was apparently far from the only accidental injury Lincoln caused. Reedus noted that Lincoln had developed quite the reputation for his accidental punches. It was such an issue that Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who plays Negan on the show, called Reedus up one night to express his dread over shooting a fight scene with Lincoln the following day. The result? About what you'd expect, according to a photo Morgan texted Reedus the following day. It's Jeff with a Band-Aid on his nose with an ice pack. <laughs> Right? No. Yeah, he punched him in the nose. Anyone who's ever seen Goodfellas knows that Oscar winner Joe Pesci is an actor with a talent for playing very scary characters. And it's a skill that Pesci himself apparently takes quite seriously, even when he's using it for a light family comedy. In the holiday classic Home Alone, Pesci plays Harry, the smarter and more savage of the two bandits who attempt to terrorize and rob Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister, only to find that he's more than they bargained for. <laughs> You guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? Though he's ultimately playing an overconfident buffoon, Pesci still felt he needed to make Culkin uncomfortable during their scenes together. In fact, he deliberately kept his distance from the young star on set until it was time to actually play the scary bad guy. But even Pesci didn't mean to go quite as far as he did in one scene. During their final confrontation after the bandits catch Kevin and prepare to pay him back for all the pain he's caused them, Harry threatens to bite off all of the boys' fingers. In the film, he never actually gets to, as Kevin is saved at the last moment. In real life, Pesci accidentally bit Culkin during one take and left a permanent scar. It broke the skin and everything. I'm a little nine-year-old boy and he's going around biting him, you know? Yeah. But, and I still, I still have the scar. Most of the time when an actor injures one of their co-stars, it's an accident. Other times, it's the product of said co-star demanding to be struck for the sake of realism. Then there are those rare moments, like one that happened on the set of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, when someone just really wants to get the scene over with. The famous dinner scene in Leatherface's house in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was filmed in one marathon shooting day in an unair conditioned house in the relentless summer heat. The actors were covered in sweat, the stench in the room was overpowering, and everyone involved was beginning to go a little crazy as they were pushed to their working limits. This craziness ultimately manifested itself as a real injury during the moment in which Gunnar Hansen's Leatherface cuts Sally's finger to feed her blood to Grandpa. The blade of the knife was covered with tape to make it dull, and Hansen was supposed to pretend to cut actress Marilyn Burns, then squeeze a bulb full of fake blood concealed in his hand to make it look like Burns was bleeding. According to a 2003 DVD commentary track, when the tube that was supposed to squirt out the blood kept clogging, Hansen got so frustrated that he pulled the tape off and cut Burns for real just to get the scene over with. In 1995, the Mortal Kombat film Roundhouse kicked its way into theaters and into the hearts of moviegoers around the globe. While expectations were low, especially since the video game movie curse was still in full effect, fans were blown away by the fierce and thrilling action on display. Part of the reason the film worked is because director Paul W.S. Anderson employed actual fighting experts in pivotal parts. For the role of the spectral, fire-breathing ninja scorpion, Anderson hired martial artist and stuntman Chris Casamassa. One of the best fight scenes of the film takes place between Lyndon Ashby's Johnny Cage and Casamassa's scorpion. Get over here! <laughs> 
the two begin their battle in a forest before being transported to another eerie dimension, concluding the bout in fiery fashion. It's a brutal exchange of fists and kicks, and one of Casamassa's attacks actually left Ashby in considerable pain. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, Ashby explained how Casamassa helped him prepare for the fight scenes, but he said there was an unintentional accident. Chris did an axe kick to my kidneys in that fight. I had a pad on, but his heel just came right between the pads and got me in the kidney hard. I was peeing blood. It hurt a lot. Not quite a fatality, but definitely painful. As the star of 2010's The Expendables, Sylvester Stallone got to test his mettle alongside other action heroes like Dolph Lundgren, Jet Li, and Jason Statham. However, it wasn't any of them who caused damage to Sly this time around. Only an idiot would do this job. How much? No, oh, like I said. During the movie, Stallone's Barney Ross squares off against Stone Cold Steve Austin's aptly named character, Payne. Austin, of course, is well known for his mud hole stomping and stone cold stunners in the WWE. It appears as if the Texas Rattlesnake brought the same energy to his performance here, but it left Stallone a little worse for wear in the end. Speaking to FHM Magazine, Stallone revealed the intensity of the fight scenes in the film, including one that left him needing surgery afterward. Actually, my fight with Stone Cold Steve Austin was so vicious that I ended up getting a hairline fracture in my neck. I'm not joking. I haven't told anyone this, but I had to have a very serious operation afterwards. I now have a metal plate in my neck. In 2020, Halle Berry marked her directorial debut with the Netflix sports drama Bruised. Berry also stars in the film as MMA fighter Jackie Pretty Bull Justice. Expectedly, she gets the opportunity to show what she is made of in a few scenes. In Bruised, Justice's main opponent is Lucia Lady Killer Chavez, portrayed by real-life UFC fighter Valentina Shevchenko. Speaking to Sports Illustrated, Barry revealed that Shevchenko played a major part in ensuring she was prepared for the film by training her. The actor also said that they decided to film their big fight early in the production, which was when Barry quickly found out just how painful MMA can really be. Barry said, On day two, I got kicked and broke two ribs. And, you know, there was a moment when I thought, we can shut this down and I can go heal, or I can keep going and just fight my way through it. However, the actor decided against it, considering all the time that both she and Shevchenko had invested in the training, as well as how a delay could result in the entire film being cancelled. So she pushed through the pain to film the fight, saying she waited until they had the scene before telling anyone about her injury. For Ryan Coogler's Creed, a decision was made to take the realism to the next level by casting real boxers in the film. Michael B. Jordan's Adonis Creed steps into the ring against pretty Ricky Conlon, who is portrayed by real-life champion boxer Tony Bellew. Much like Sylvester Stallone took a proper hook from Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV, Jordan tasted a knuckle sandwich in the movie, courtesy of Bellew. Appearing on The Graham Norton Show, Jordan revealed that there was a need to get footage of him taking a punch for a slow-motion sequence. There is no way to fake that type of scene, so he had to take a real punch from his co-star twice. And action. <laughs> While Jordan said he didn't quite get knocked out, he did feel the impact, adding, It felt like I was in a car accident for like four days afterward. Tony said he only went 40%. It felt like 85. It was tough. Compared to other films mentioned here, Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather isn't exactly bursting with intense action that should result in broken bones and busted lips. Sure, there's violence on display, but there should be no reason for the actress to suffer any onset injuries apart from a freak accident. However, the memorable scene where Sonny Corleone lays into his brother-in-law Carlo carries a bit more bite because of the real-life bad blood between the actors. Apparently, James Caan and Gianni Russo had developed some hostility toward each other throughout the production of the 1972 film. They still rehearsed their big scene, but when it came down to the day of the shoot, Caan started to do things differently and more viciously. Russo explained to Entertainment Weekly, He improvised a few things, like that little billy club he threw at me when I came off the stoop. He hit me right in the head with that, and then he throws me over the railing and he's biting my hands. None of that was supposed to happen. When I crawl out, he literally lifted me up with his kick. <laughs> Russo added that the beating left him with injuries, including broken ribs and a chipped elbow. The story of 1989 Cyborg merits a book. 
While it might appear like one of the Canon Group's trademark low-budget action films, there's a lot of history behind how this production came to be. The short of it is that Canon planned to shoot Spider-Man and Masters of the Universe 2 at the same time to cut costs, but plans fell apart. Since Canon had already spent the money on costumes and props, filmmaker Albert Pune wrote a script over a weekend that became Cyborg. Jean-Claude Van Damme signed up to play the lead role of Gibson Rickenbacker, and it was off to the races. As with any film featuring Van Damme, Cyborg is all about the action, and there are countless fight scenes in the movie. In one of the sequences, Van Damme's character battles a gang of pirates, one of whom is played by former bodybuilder Jackson Rock Pinkney. Unfortunately, an accident occurred when a prop knife went into Pinkney's eye. According to the Orlando Sentinel, Pinkney sued and was awarded $487,500 in damages. Rob Reiner's The Princess Bride is a beloved 1987 fantasy film that has stood the test of time. What can I do for you? You can die slowly, cut into a thousand pieces. It's a riveting action-adventure story that follows Wesley as he tries to rescue the love of his life, Princess Buttercup. It boasts plenty of exciting action sequences, but the scene that knocked actor Carrie Elwes out cold came during a relatively tame moment. It happened during a scene in which Count Rugen puts Wesley down for the count by bonking his head with the handle of his sword. According to Elwes' book, As You Wish, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride, Christopher Guest, who played Rugen, had no intention of harming him with his metal sword in the scene. The problem was, it didn't look great on camera. So Elwes said he encouraged Guest to slightly tap his head and he would move. Elwes wrote, Chris swung the heavy sword down toward my head. However, as fate would have it, it landed just a touch harder than either of us anticipated. And that, folks, was the last thing I remember from that day's shoot. I woke up in the hospital <laughs> with stitches being sewn into my forehead. Where am I? And the scene that you see in the movie is in fact me being knocked out for real. On a more lighthearted note, the most famous injury in The Princess Bride didn't come from any physical altercation whatsoever. It happened during the scene in which Inigo and Fezzik take Wesley to be healed by Miracle Max, played by Billy Crystal. Crystal improvised much of his material as Max, churning out jokes on the set for three days while his co-stars fought to hold in their laughter during filming. In many cases, they were unsuccessful, breaking character during takes because Crystal was just too funny. Mandy Patinkin in particular, though, really wanted to make it through the scenes without laughing, and it cost him. By the time filming was done, the effort actually gave him a physical injury. The only injury I sustained on that movie was I bruised a rib from holding in my laughter with Billy Crystal. And that's the God's honest truth. If Sean Bean is in a movie, chances are his character won't make it to the final credits. No matter if he's a good or bad guy, Bean's on-screen personas seem to be fated to dance with the Grim Reaper under the pale moonlight. In 1992's Patriot Games, Bean's character Sean Miller doesn't make it out alive either, unsurprisingly. Though in this case, he is the villain, so no one can be too upset about Harrison Ford's Jack Ryan putting him in a watery grave. Miller and Ryan have an exhilarating final encounter on a moving speedboat. Throughout the clash, Ryan looks to be on the back foot and overpowered by Miller. However, the CIA's favorite child perseveres and puts his opponent down once and for all. As Bean revealed on the complete Sean Bean, the scuffle between him and Ford resulted in him receiving the infamous scar on his face. While shooting the scene, Ford accidentally hit him with a boat hook, which cut just under Bean's left eyebrow. The Punisher is finally getting its flowers years after its 2004 release. Starring Thomas Jane as Frank Castle, it is a bloody good time that doesn't shirk away from violent encounters and manages to capture the tone of the comic book character. It might not have the body count of Marvel's next big screen stab at the character, 2008's Punisher Warzone, but it did feature its own literal on-set stabbing. Appearing on The Rich Eisen Show, Jane revealed that someone had forgotten to replace the real knife with the prop. So during the scene where Castle fights the hulking Russian, played by ex-pro wrestler Kevin Nash, Jane stabs Nash in the chest with an actual knife. It stabs him and it goes in and I'm looking at the knife, I'm looking at him, Kevin, he's just looking down at me and I'm look there's a knife sticking out of his chest. The actor said he expected Nash to lash out and react in anger, but Nash didn't. Nonetheless, Jane said he still felt terrible about it. For his part, Nash has said that he doesn't hold any grudges about what happened, but he says that the people in charge of props should be doing their jobs more diligently to avoid these types of incidents from occurring. He just sat there, looked at the knife, looked at me, shook his head. <laughs> I sent him a couple cases of beer. 
Bloodsport is widely seen as the film that catapulted Jean-Claude Van Damme into superstardom, and it's also recognized as one of the greatest martial arts movies of all time. While most fans remember Bloodsport for the vicious final fight, there is another swift battle that stands out, albeit for a different reason. An earlier fight scene with actor Bernard Mariano ends with him making one last attempt to get Van Damme, who puts him back down with a chop to the face. The scene looks great on film. However, it wasn't the best time for Mariano. Speaking to South China Morning Post, Mariano explained, When we rolled the first take, he moved too fast. He was already moving back and caught me full on the jaw and split my lip. I passed out and was taken to hospital and stitched up." Mariano insisted that the blood on the mat, which appears in the final cut, was actually his own. 